All right. So Sorry. we are here with the one, the man, the myth, the legend, J.R. McKee, founder of MPR Global. Yes, Appreciate sir. you taking some time to be on the podcast, bro. No, it's no doubt, man. I love speaking with you, man. Every time we've met, it's been great vibes. So I love speaking with you. Yeah. So for anybody that did not catch it, what was this last uh, October, was it? I don't know. It's been a while, but I'm not I'm not sure. Yeah. So in October, I believe, of last year, JR was gracious enough to have me at a conference of his with uh, Wendy. Miss or, Wendy Day. Yeah, Wendy Day uh, with the Rap Coalition. So that was a great talk, and uh, I'm sure we got even more gems since right. then. So almost a year since then, a lot has changed. Uh, you have come out with the real industry plugs yes. podcast so yes. what what is that exactly about uh what can artists learn from that right so so the real industry plugs it actually started as a, a actual argument between me and a friend of mine his name is boom man he owns a company called authentic empire and so we've been friends for maybe 15 plus years and both you know started in the music industry super young and you know made it to where we are today but we were arguing about independence versus signing to a major label. And it was a real argument, uh, debate. Debate is a better word, because we're not, like, you know, I so said we're friends, so it wasn't like we had any skin in the game per se, but we were just debating different perspectives. And, you know, I was of the mindset that the major labels aren't of much use anymore. You know what I mean? Um, and so I was explaining that to him, and he was like, hey, you're crazy, you know, that's the bag. You know, he has a different point of view. And so we ended up going on Instagram live with it. And so it spilled over to Instagram, me and him are live, we arguing on live. And so we took the clip of that and posted it and it went crazy. And we were like, you know what? Let's turn this into a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and so we started the podcast Real Industry Plugs, but what has come from it has been amazing because we're able to educate so many different people um, and you know, you end up learning with anybody on the internet, artists, just anybody putting out information on the internet or putting your energy out there on the internet, you'll find the people that connect to you and see it from your, your view. And then for boom, man, he found the people that connected with him and saw it from his view. And so we end up, you know, it's like a sports team damn near. It's like, whose team are you on? And so like the, the people love the show and they get educated by the show. And you know, I have my side rooting for me and his side rooting for him. It's, it's a real fun show. So you were on the side of the independent yeah uh, what was your what were your like top points for rooting for that side well it's just it's just a matter of where we are in the industry right uh, where we are in the world streaming opened up everything because the reason that the music business was able to create a sustainable business is because it was able to control the audience by tv and radio and this and the store I can control who you see when you walk into FYE. I can control who you see when you play 106 in Park. You know, I can control who you listen to when you turn on Hot 107.9. By doing that, I control, you know, who sells. Because if you can never be heard, how can you sell? And so guess who's going to sell? My artist. All right, so that's the music business. That's the formula to it, right? But now, because of streaming and the social media, nobody can control who you hear. You're going to listen to who you want to listen to. Just like, you know, I have people that like my point of view. There are people that like the type of artist you are. And so nobody can stop them from liking, oh, I like Amari. He's a great rapper. Nobody can stop me from liking Amari. There's, there's no gatekeeping in it. And so with that being said, it's like, now what's the use for the label? The only use was I had to go to them because they control the airwaves. I didn't control anything anymore. So why would I have to go to them? I can go viral for free. I can stream and go platinum without ever speaking to an industry executive. You know what I mean? There are people out there right now today that are platinum who have never signed any sort of paperwork. You know, they're just completely at home in their living room making music that's fun to them and the world is listening to it. It's just, it's just unstoppable at this point. So it's like, now what do I need a label for? If you're not controlling anything, only the only reason I came to you before because you controlled it. You don't control anything now. So it's like, oh, I'll just keep all this money to myself. You know what I mean? Um, and so that's 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 the the genesis of it. But obviously, if you want to be a huge artist, now you have to be an entrepreneur because now you have to go out there and find the right team members. You can't do anything completely by yourself. You know what I mean? So my thing is all of the people who are 
professionals in this industry who have been doing it for a long time, you can hire them. I'm hireable. You can hire J.R. McKee. If I wanted to get on playlists, I don't need a label to get on playlists. I'll just go hire J.R. McKee. You know what I mean? If I if I want to get on the radio, I don't need the label to get on the radio. I'll just go hire this independent radio person. You know what I mean? If I want to be big in UK, I don't need to call um, Interscope. I can call over to UK and say, hey, I want to hire you to work my record. And so that's where the entrepreneur entrepreneurship comes in. Because like now, I want to be this huge global artist. Let me hire the right pieces and put the right pieces together with my team. All of which I've never given away any ownership. That's the main thing we were being robbed of is ownership. When these record labels sell for 400 million, 500 million, the artists don't get any of that because they don't own anything. But now, because I created my own team, I've gone platinum, now my catalog, my personal catalog as an artist is worth 50 million. I would have gave that away had I signed to a label. They would be worth 50 million, not me. I would only be getting my show money. And so that's that's what I'm explaining to people. I'm just kind of you know, trying my best to open people's eyes to what the business really is. And so that was my argument to Boom. And I did win that yeah. argument, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me, we do agree with most yeah. of it. Let me play a little bit of God's Advocate here. Okay, let's do it. All right, so yes, people do have the ability mm -hmm. to be free in their, their thinking. Like, you can choose who to listen to, but that, that journey of making people realize that you are free to listen to anything is yeah. a bit harder mm -hmm. than just than what meets the eye. So yeah. obviously, you know, we've promoted for like tens of thousands of artists. So we, we know that very intuitively. Uh, yeah. So the record labels, when you have a much larger budget, not to say that people can't break through, because obviously we yeah. know that people can break through. Uh, but what ways is an independent artist really going to break through in a way that a major label like they they don't need the major label what tactics yeah. are they going to use right in order to break through uh that because everything like if you if you do it free sometimes mm -hmm. it's going to take longer if you have a mm -hmm. paid method like a label does mm -hmm. you can just get the traffic when you want like we were talking yeah. earlier today uh with somebody else about the difference between search engine traffic and mm -hmm. paid traffic. Right. Search engine or algorithm traffic, whatever you want to call it. Like, mm -hmm. is it free? Yes, in a sense, it is free. It's going to take a lot longer yeah. to do that. So how can mm -hmm. you use the methods that are out there today to break through all the noise without right. this major label? Without the major label. Well, number one, another thing that artists have to realize is whether you sign to the major label or not, you're going to have to break yourself. I know this, I've worked at major labels. They're not breaking artists. That's not what they do. They are 50 to 100, not zero to 50. So even if you sign today to a major label, if you're not already at 50, you're doing nothing until you get yourself to 50. You know what I mean? And so that's what I was trying to explain to a lot of artists is like, why would you sign just to have to carry your own, the own ball, your own ball to 50 yards? Why not carry the ball to 50 yards and then do the deal? Cause I'm not against major labels at all. It's just come in with the leverage so that the deal so that you get to keep some of that ownership so that when your catalog is worth 50 million, you control 25 of that million. You know what I'm saying? So but nevertheless, how do I get discovered? How do I break through the noise without a label the same way you would if you were on a label and that's content? You know, what I mean, content is king. And so that's why I even started NPR, because it's a content focused um, distribution platform. You know, what I mean, we focus on content first. You know what I mean? That's the only way you can put out the greatest song in the world and nobody will never know it exists. You know what I mean? You can put it on Spotify, Apple, put it everywhere. How are people ever going to know that it exists? The only way is through content. That's how you get discovered. Making content is free. I can, we making content right now. Yep. You know what I mean? Making content is free. Anybody at home um, on TikTok is making content. So that's how I begin to get discovered, but it is a lot of different strategies. There are professionals to this thing, but that doesn't mean that, what's the opposite of professional? Unprofessional? I don't know. That doesn't amateur. amateur, thank you. That doesn't mean that amateurs can't break through, but there are people who do this for a living. You know what I mean? And some of them work at the label, but most of them don't. The thing about the industry now is people like myself realized, man, why go get this $200,000 check to work for you and you keep everything when I'm really the one bringing the brain power you know what, if I don't work for Universal and I go work for myself, I can make 200,000 a month. 
And that's that's literally the truth. And so I am not the only person who realized that. Every top executive has left the major label system because you're paying me 200000 a year when I'm supposed to be making it a month. And that's why we're all for hire now. We work for ourselves. We don't work for the major labels anymore. So what ours are finding out when they get to the major labels is it's bare. The talent is gone. The talent doesn't want 200000 a year. The talent wants 200000 a month. So you go to the major label thinking you're about to do something. No, you're working with amateurs just like you were because those are the only people that are really taking those jobs because they haven't figured out what we know and then they can go and do it for themselves. You know what I mean? But content, I think the, to answer your question, content, how do I as an artist get found? It's through content. You know, I don't need anybody to make content. All I need is an iPhone. Let's just say a smartphone to be fair. Cause I know there are Android users out there. Yes. <laughs> all I, I need is- talk to, I don't think I've talked about it that much on the show, yeah, but, but Android all the way Yeah, over so all I need is a smartphone to make content. You know what I mean? And so that's how I break through the noise. That's how I get noticed. That's how I get streams. That's how I get followers, you know? And even if I sign this deal today, they're gonna sit back and say, where's your content? So you're still gonna have to carry yourself to 50. All right, so what type of content specifically, yeah. like, so they, anybody that's been watching the show, they know for a long mm -hmm. period of time uh, that there's specific types of content. I can make content, right? Yeah. But if there's, I don't know how many pieces per day mm -hmm. uh, of content there are online, but it's got to be millions. Mm -hmm. uh, we can look at that stat afterwards. But of those millions of pieces of content, there's certain types that make you stop and, yeah. and pay attention. So what types right. of content have you seen? Uh, from the artist that you break, like which ones right. go so, the most viral? I, I would say that's what we, what we would call trends, right? Like, so there are certain trends out there that people are on that wave right now. So, for example, right now, you know, just as simple as putting a video up of you singing your song with the lyrics across of it. You know, I call it lyrics on the loop. You know what I mean? So it may be eight or 12 bars of the song with the lyrics and you just cut and you basically make a hundred of the same music video. So here's the same eight bars of me in my car, of me in my bathroom. Here I am taking a shower to the same eight bars. Not, obviously not sexually, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you know, my point is like, you're making music videos to the same exact timestamp. That's what they're called, timestamps. You're making music videos to the same exact timestamps and adding the lyrics across it. And what you're doing is you're exposing that song. You know what I mean? That's how people are discovering that song and then hopefully going back and streaming it. That's how you grow your streams is by constantly putting that particular piece in their, in their face. But here's where you have to become a student. You have to learn from trial and error. Some pieces are gonna work better, some pieces won't work at all. The pieces that don't work all, at all, you discontinue. The pieces that work better, you do more of. And you're literally building Testing. an audience. Testing, yeah, which, which yeah. creatives are gonna right. work best. Yeah, but, but while you're doing that testing, you're building an audience at the same time. And so that's how you begin to get discovered. and. The one thing that you have to know is like you said, there's a million plus pieces of content out there. The beauty of the internet is you're only trying to attract your audience. People people may not like me because my head is bald. People may not like me because of my accent. That's fine. But there are people who like me because of my accent. There are people who feel like they relate to me because my head is bald. I'm looking for my audience. And trust me, there's enough audience for every person on earth. There are millions of people who will relate to your exact situation. That's all the people you're looking for. You're not looking for everybody. You're looking for your audience. You know what I mean? If you find your audience, you can make a living. You know what I mean? There are people out there, and this is, this is rampant. There are thousands of artists making six figures off their music. It's not the old music industry where there are five dominant artists. There are thousands of artists out there that are making a great living off their music and we've never heard of them. You know what I mean? They're, they found their audience. Their audience is participating. They're streaming. They're buying their merch. Every year they're making, you know, 200, 300, 400,000 living great off their fan base. That's what we are looking for in the music industry now. And I, and I don't mean we as in labels. I mean, we as in the community. This is what you should be looking for. Everybody doesn't want to be a superstar, but everybody does want to make a living. And you can make a living off your music. You just got to find your audience. So when you say you're signing acts or like to to the distribution label, yeah. you mean the distribution in terms of 
like a distro kit type distribution like that do you have that service or are you talking about you have a structure in place that you work out a deal like a label would but it's structured yeah. differently so so it's definitely it's definitely structured differently um you know we we have full intentions of separating ourselves from labels um major labels um mainly in the sense of owner in the in the sense of ownership like when we do our partnerships the person artist maintains their ownership you know what i mean so for example a major label they sign you they blow you up that catalog is now worth 100 million that's the labels 100 million if npr we sign you we blow you up that catalog's worth 100 million your portion of that catalog which is usually the lion's share let's say you know more than 50 percent so let's say 60 percent so that you are now worth 60 million and we have you know 40. you know what i mean that's the, the the biggest difference is that ownership and that you're able to share in the value that we created together whereas at a label the value is fully on their side you don't get any of that value you know what i mean so that's the biggest difference is ownership um after that i think a big difference is ours is we don't we don't do long-term deals like most artists are signed to their labels you know five ten years if not for life you know what i mean we don't do those type of deals our deals are pretty what i would call medium term you know so like two years three years max you know what i mean so the idea was to make you sustainable to make you a rust where okay you're you're here with us for two or three years now you're at a rust level status you don't need anybody you can distribute through distro kid if you choose and you know sell a hundred thousand copies because we've made you a sustainable artist you know what i mean so that's the idea is like be that um sort of uh launching pad to push you into you know sustainable space for you to then go on and do whatever you choose to do okay so you take xyz percentage mm -hmm. of uh, does that include uh now is there recuperation for budget yeah, spend yeah, all absolutely. that stuff so, Brother, so, you so, you, so yeah. they're net I was you know no, no, for all ahead. the people out there so yeah. just in case anybody hits you up but I yeah. I ask these questions first gotcha. and just, you know, right. so you have your costs. This mm -hmm. is this is like any other business, just so people yeah. recognize. Now, back in the day, as I use analogy with them, uh, often our audience about a hedge fund or, or mm -hmm. financial firms and all that stuff or uh, um, tech startups. Yeah, like you have two options: you mm -hmm. can give up some equity, mm -hmm. and somebody else can use some money to promote that. And obviously, nobody's just going to give you a promotion budget and not take equity in something. So it's yeah. either or: either you have the money to promote yourself, mm -hmm. and you come up with a structure, and you come up with your executive board, and you come yeah. up with your employees and all that stuff, yeah. or you give up some equity, and somebody else can bring in their team, right, to do all that for you. Right now, that team is going to have cost. You have a yeah. promotion budget that you have to spend, or a content budget, or whatever you do. Somebody has to get paid for something because people yeah. have to make a living, like you said. Right. Uh, so you have your rec recuperation cost, and then you have the net uh, yeah. proceeds of right. all the sales, all the streams, all the tickets. And so, yeah. are you taking more of a holistic approach in the like the ticket sales, merch, uh, right? All, so all that so. I think the term that that um sums it up is profit share you know we, we do profit share deals but that's most i feel like that's across the board for every independent situation um and now the labels are starting to do it because before you know they were doing artist deals where there's points um and you had to recoup out of your points we do profit share deals where once we recoup whatever the split is that's what everybody gets everybody gets their split um evenly on that profit share um, but no, we we don't participate in touring. Um, so I have to explain this to a lot of artists. When you're an artist, that's 10, 11 different businesses. That's a merch business. That's a publishing business. That's a sync business. You know, you, you run down the line of all the businesses you're open as an artist, right? Well, for our company, NPR, we only participate in the streaming um, and sales business. And then we also participate in the sync business because we have a lot of those relationships. Um, money long hours and hours that's one of ours um we we sync that song probably seven times um in like a month you know so like we have great sync relationships um and then also merch and that's only because we attribute the merch to the projects so like for every project we'll have a merch line come out but other than that all those other businesses you know are free and clear of us you know you whatever you make in those businesses we don't we don't touch that money so you said you had these great relationships for sync yes how do you get 
the great relationship? Man, longevity for one. I mean, after you've been in the game so long, you, you know, your peers get jobs. You know what I mean? That's that's pretty much the number one reason I will say I'm in the position I'm in is because all of my peers got great jobs. Um, you know, my peers work at Apple Music, Spotify, um, everywhere, man, TikTok, everywhere that you need to be. These are people I've had relationships before the companies even existed. You know, I've known the the girl that runs TikTok. I've known her before TikTok existed. You know, my friend that is over Spotify, I've known him before Spotify existed. You know what I mean? So if you're in this game long enough and you're, you know, a good person and you have great relationships with other good people and eventually we rise together. Um, and so when it comes to the sinks, it's like these are just people I've known, you know, 10 plus years. And so okay. you keep those good. Like I always tell people, don't spend too much time going after the people above you like build relationships side to side left to right those are the people that five years from now are going to be in the positions you need you know what i mean and and hopefully if you keep at it you'll be in a position that they need you know what i mean we can play off each other we can lean on each other um that's just that's just the way it should be so spend more time with your peers than you do chasing the people that are above because eventually they'll be out and your peers will be in yeah so you talk about the major labels taking artists from 50 to 100. What would you say NPR Global does? What percentage do they well, start at? Right, and right. So we, we are a zero to 100 company. Okay. Um, we, we start from the beginning. Money Long is a perfect example of that. Um, and to get a concrete so people understand yeah. and, and before they approach you, like, do you mean they have a voice and they have like they can uh, sing a little bit or mm -hmm. like you're doing artist development or like, no, they can already sing. They yeah. just don't have the rest of the structure. So. <clears throat> um, obviously, I want them to be. Have feet in the game, not a foot, but feet. Meaning they they make music. They understand how to make music. Yes, we do develop them. You know what I mean? We I'm I'm a phenomenal A and R. So I always come in and I help arrange the music. I help pick the songs. I help write the songs if need be. Like I always come in and work with them on the music. I help develop them. But it's not like I'm going to take somebody who man I heard them singing in the supermarket, but they've never recorded. You know what I mean? Like it's it's it's. It's too easy to record. I, I signed a girl named Amari Noel. Her entire first project was recorded on her iPhone. It's too easy to record for you to have the excuse of, oh, I didn't have the money for the studio. You got a phone? Because if you got a phone, you can record. You know what I mean? So it's like, we're, we're past those excuses. So of course I'm not going to use singing in the supermarket. No, like go, go do something, go put in some work, go start recording, you know, go hone in on your craft. So go start finding your sound. So yes, they do have to be feet in the game like okay play me the songs how many songs do you have you only have five songs it's not enough call me when you have 30 call me when you have 50 you know what i mean so you have to be actively going after it i always used to tell people like i'd rather sign the artist that has 10 videos with 100 views than the artist that has one video with 50,000 views because the one that has 10 videos that means he's working that means he's after it no matter what he's going to like he's not waiting on nobody he didn't put out 10 music videos he's not waiting he's getting after it. i want the artist that's getting after it you know what i mean so but what i do mean by from zero is no fan base you know like money long zero fan base like we literally started her all of her profiles her spotify her youtube they they all was at zero um amari noel the girl who i just told you about she had put out one song in her entire life but she, but she gave me 80 songs. So she was actively recording, but she hadn't put anything out. You what, know what I mean? What's the frequency of those releases? What, what was your release date strategy for us? So I like to stay in people's space. You know what I mean? Like, like obviously we all know attention span is very short. And so I want to make sure we're constantly putting out content on a daily basis, whether that be audio content, meaning the songs, visual content, meaning music videos, or just pure social media content that's marketing content. We're putting out content every day. Um, so for a brand new artist, I would say two to three weeks. If you're a rapper, every two weeks. Um, if you're a singer, every three weeks. You know what I mean? That's, that's the longest we'll go. I might go shorter than that, but we'll never go longer than that, at least until you're established. 
You know what I mean? And is by the way, I, I want everybody who yeah. li- who's watching this as a subscriber of our channel. We did not rehearse this beforehand, just so you guys know. None of yeah, this was rehearsed <laughs> beforehand. I did not yeah. tell him what to say because they've heard me say, say that. all okay. this stuff. Okay. I'm just, okay, yeah. I'm just saying. Right, there's, right. There's obviously, a, form- put there's, a, there's put obviously, a, there's obviously a formula here <laughs> that yeah. I'm not just blowing smoke. Yeah, um, for sure. Dude, that took me away from my question. See, I had a question <laughs> that I, go, I had to gloat. Yeah. That's, that's my fault. Um, but the oh here it is the so those releases were mm-hmm. they all original releases or did you mix in some some covers did you mix in some other no nah, i mean I, I don't have anything against covers but you know for me i i want our original music out there um the artist doing covers is great that's good content the thing is you have to put out so much content it's fine to have a variety like if i had to put out four pieces of content a day um which is four times seven is 28 um 28 pieces of content a week you know, I might need some covers in there to fill in that 28 slot. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't have anything against it, but that'll never be a part of my formula. Right. Like that won't be a part of the plan. Did, and is that for a specific reason? It's just like, you well, just want the original content? Well, of course, or? We're, is it, we're, we're trying to run a business. We're trying to grow you as an artist. Like we're not in it. Again, we don't take your touring. We don't take any of the acting money. Like the, there are a, a million ways to make money as a brand and we want to build that brand, but we're not interested. We're a streaming business. You know what I mean? So we're trying to make sure you're a strong stream and we're starting from scratch. You know what I mean? Amari like Noel, example, we started from scratch. Money Long, we started from scratch. Like, I don't have time for you to do covers. We're trying to make you an artist. You know what I'm saying? So again, I don't have anything against them, okay. but it's, it's not part of this. Strategy. Yeah. Fair enough. So in those same lines, which genres do you uh, primarily work with and then where where are you trying to go with right. the future genres so i don't i don't know if this is coincidence or it's just is what i attract to but the first three artists we signed are all r&b artists um money long's r&b amari noel's r&b and now we signed manny wells who is afro beats but it's afro beats r&b um and so I don't know if that's coincidence or just what I attract to, but R and B is is the primary space right now because those are the first three acts. But we we're totally open to signing rappers. Um, I, I do lean heavy towards Afro beats right now. I just feel like that's the future. You know, first of all, hip hop is forty years old. Like that's nothing. You know what I mean? That's only been forty years, and it's the most dominant genre right now. Um, but of course, before hip hop, there was another do- dominant genre, and I believe after hip hop, there'll be another dominant genre. And my money's going on Afro beats. The I I, I agree. I, yeah. I think Afro beats has definitely a, a direction because Spotify hasn't really tapped into those markets yet. Yeah. Uh, Boom plays is a lot bigger than Spotify right. in certain markets. However, I think mm-hmm. if there's going to be one that I could possibly pick above it it might be latino like the yeah the latino market huge. is is absolutely yeah. insane it's, like it's huge when you look on the stats of the top five listeners for artists brazil's literally always yeah. like one but, of the but places. also you you recognize that spotify has already taken over those spaces yes yes they have you know what I mean? um and, and so, so that's they, why they, you they have, have the market cornered yeah. uh so I still think it has more room because it mm. hasn't infiltrated. Like I, I don't see the Latin artists have a bunch of plays elsewhere, right? So whenever yeah. they do tap into the other markets, that's still room for growth yeah. for the Latin genre. But uh, I agree. I yeah. think Afrobeats, uh, and we recently, so our, our signing is a little different, as mm-hmm. people know. But uh, what we are doing is signing songs versus okay. signing artists. So we just, you know, we've had the promotion agency for. Yeah coming up on nine years now uh, or eight years um but instead of signing the artist what we'll do is take a single and mm-hmm. take a heavier percentage in that single yeah. and then uh like you said you have like a short-term deal it's kind of it's it's the same idea just yeah. executed differently so we'll take yeah. a heavier percentage in that single uh-huh. and then like if they want to come out with the next single they can keep all the equity in that one and then right. maybe if they come out with the next one they say hey you guys want this we'll one we'll sign this, that yeah. one so it's like a la carte a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, but I we have been hearing more and more Afrobeats. Afrobeats. Like yeah. Afrobeats, uh, cause yeah. 
I don't want to knock Latino. I, it's huge, but I and it, obviously I'm probably biased because I'm black. But I just I don't listen to those songs. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, you know, right. and, and so, but when Afrobeats come on, I'm like, ooh, I like this. And so I I just feel like this is only opinion. I just feel like more people will connect to Afrobeats than Latino. Like, there's more space to grow outside of their personal field. Is what I'm trying to say. And then number one, Afrobeats is English. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's Latin. that's the point I was gonna. You know what I mean? Afrobeats is English, and so I don't even know if this is true, but I feel like more people speak English. No, they do. You know what I mean? English is a base language, yeah. kind of like the well, right now, the United yeah. States dollar is a base currency. Yeah, and so I feel we'll, like more we'll people will be able to connect to Afrobeats. Uh, it's just so good, man. It's so good. It's great. It's great <laughs> stuff, man. I, yeah. Look, we're on. So we from the beginning we have never had like a focus genre yeah. ours is just, obviously we only put clean music with us but yeah. uh other than that we pretty much get a equal amount yeah. of every genre across the board yeah. so now that can be you can look at that as a pro or con i think sometimes when people do focus on one genre they're able to like hyper focus on it and they yeah. can build their their list and their channels faster that way right um so that's that is one pro that i do see uh that a lot of labels doing yeah. uh, and another note while i'm on this subject i i do see more indie labels uh to your point earlier signing a lot mm. of these acts they might just sign them for the songs yeah. um versus you know signing for for your entire catalog like you were saying but uh they are beating the the major labels at yeah. the the playlist game yeah um to to as much as you can beat them yeah. now, there are some dirty tactics that i don't think i've gotten into too much on the show but definitely right. um the only thing that i don't necessarily like about mm -hmm. like the model of uh the streaming business that you're building your in a way you're kind of building your platform on their platform right um because we have like if they're the ones paying the streaming amount, mm -hmm. you have to build your list on Spotify. So I have to yeah. pay for this ad spend to go towards building a following on Spotify or Instagram or wherever. Right. And throughout the past couple of years, they have shown themselves to be corrupt in at least a fair percentage of instances where they shouldn't be corrupt. So that's the only thing I'd you know, protect against yeah. is sending that traffic to your own website. Mm -hmm. uh, so that at least if they pull something, then you can have an email list of yeah. guys. This happened. At least your core fans will stand behind you. Yeah, because okay. not everybody's going to be as big as Taylor Swift, right? Or like mm -hmm. one of these huge artists that if she says something, those people are doing it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. they, like they are. In fact, yeah. the deal. Um, you know, we talked about artists not getting their share whenever a record mm -hmm. label sells to another right. record label. She was actually able to negotiate a deal, uh, yeah. her second deal that okay, when you guys sell, you're giving a percentage exactly. to, to the rest of these artists because this is this is crazy, right? Uh, so once you get that standing, like once all of us band together, all of yeah. us indies band together, and we say no, like we're not doing this stuff anymore, that's when real change can happen. Um, I I always just caution against giving too much control to Spotify yeah, to or other Apple people. Music yeah. and, and so so on and so forth. Yeah. It's like a necessary evil. Uh, I mean, I but, feel like once once the economy recovers, or if their economy recovers, we're we're headed towards you know direct to consumer anyway. You know what I mean? And so Spotify and Apple are going to lose a lot of their power. It won't make them. I shouldn't even say lose a lot of their power, but. Because they're going to keep growing, you know what I mean? Like they haven't even gotten to Africa yet. There's so many places for them to grow. So I don't want to say they're going to lose power, but a lot of artists are going to be direct to the consumer, and that's going to be their main focus. Like they won't be, what's my Spotify monthly listeners? Ah, they don't care. They just sold a hundred thousand uh, albums, <laughs> you know what I mean? Straight from a website, you know. So it's like they don't care about Spotify as much anymore. So you think people would go back to? buying a single or you Absolutely. think because i don't know if you've seen our episodes but i have a hybrid model of this yeah. and i'd love to get your take yeah so i believe mm -hmm. that there will be more it'll be more decentralized app mm -hmm. and it will be a pay per stream so you pay 10 bucks per month or 15 mm -hmm. bucks but it's more like a credit so you have yeah. 15 dollars worth of credit to spend on music this month mm, i get it yes I get it. so yeah. it would be like if i have 
my I, I set the price for my stream. So if right. I want to have like the movie industry does of a windowing concept, meaning mm. I come out in theaters first. Yeah. And if you want to go see this, you need to go to the theater. If you right. want to listen to my album on the first right. week, that's like Kanye should have done, which we talked mm. about on our podcast. Uh, then this is going to be five cents per stream because right. this is this is my art. And right. I'm valuing my art at my price. I like that. And then the next, let's say they do that for two weeks or whatever, like the movie industry does. Mm-hmm. Next two weeks, okay, like all the hyper fans, they got uh, to hear yeah. this and go down to two two cents a stream. And then after that, all right, this is one cents a stream. You know, you guys just play it, play yeah. it, play it. So, and if you're an indie artist, obviously you can't charge five cents per stream. You could, but not as many yeah, people are going to hit it. the button. So there'd yeah. be like a disclaimer that the app would say, you know, play all songs one cent and below or two cents and below. <laughs> and then if it is yeah. a song that's like five cents and you hit the play button, it'd be like, all right, this is, yeah. are you sure you want to play this? Like, yeah, I'll play this because that's the five I'm, cent. I'm not going to lie. This is this is, this feels like I'm paying for air. It, feel, it feels like I'm paying for water, which I do a lot. <laughs> I spend a lot of money on water every week. But you already so, pay so, for so, streaming. But, you no, but I'm, I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm just saying that that's what it feels like. And I'm also not saying that it won't work. It probably will. You know what I mean? But it gives me that. And it's cool. I pay a lot of money for water. It just <laughs> is what it is. You know what I mean? So I, I, I get it. But but regard, I don't know how the structure will be. But I know that, yes, these people want to support their artists. You know what I mean? And now, you know, with crypto and all that, you know, you're probably going to be able to be invested into them more so than just supporting. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a win-win across the board. So I know the crypto is just down right now, so people aren't too concerned with it, but it'll bounce back. And when it does, you know, you'll see the rise of the direct-to-consumer. You know what I mean? That's that's definitely coming. Yeah. I think um, I haven't seen anybody. Necess- there's one. There's Scribe. So you guys can mm-hmm. stop commenting to me on it. Scribe Music. They do more like it's a um, do you subscribe monthly to somebody to open up their catalog? Like mm-hmm. you, you give them, I don't know, like 10 cents a month or whatever, yeah. and that opens up their catalog. I think that's a to bit you. too messy yeah. and too too manual. I think if it were more like, um, you know, you, you do pay your 15 bucks a month. You are but, out of money for the month. I can see that. It's exactly. Like, it's like the, 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 the well, phones. Now, the it's, phones now it's upsell because yeah. people who do listen to If you consume more, it's not just right. a buffet. Like artists yeah. and Taylor Swift, to her credit, has been one of the larger voices on this, yeah. uh, saying that it, music is not like this buffet. Like, why why are movies this buffet? Like why, yeah. why do artists get treated like a buffet? Right. And you, you go somewhere else for all your supplies of materials. and The changes uh, are coming, man. I, yeah, I, I like, know it. Music should not be this buffet thing. Like, yeah. If you want to pay more to listen to a bunch more music, if you want to pay 30 bucks a month to listen to a bunch more music, fine. If somebody just wants to pay 10, that's fine yeah. for them. Like They yeah. can do that. But uh, that would be like us all having like netflix is the only place that you that can go, go and, yeah. and no matter how many movies you watch yeah. then it's all on this one thing like no netflix can have their content if i want right. to pay for that then I'll, I'll pay for that and then if i want to watch uh hulu stuff or you know hbo mash or whatever or apple tv i can pay for their stuff but it's not just going to be this one huge buffet I think yeah. the huge buffet model, um, it, it will eventually break. Yeah. So, th- yeah, even- everything has its time, man. You know, it's, everything comes and goes. And so you would be fooling yourself to think that, you know, this is going to last forever. Like, this is going to change. You know what I mean? I don't know what the changes will be. I, I do at least know that it will be direct to consumer. I know that much, but I don't know how that's going to work. You know, we'll, we'll see when it gets here. Yeah. It's coming, though. I agree. Agreed. Yeah. So, in closing, mm-hmm. do you have any parting remarks? It's been great, man. This, yeah. this is great content. Any any last words you want to say to the people? Uh, yeah, where can mo- they find you? So yeah, so. Mo- most definitely. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at jr mckee mckee is m c k e e dot c o jr mckee dot co. So you can follow me on Instagram. It's Twitter. Uh, I tweet a lot. Uh, Twitter. Co, it's no dot in it, so just I'm Twitter Co. JR McKee Co. There's no dot in it. So Twitter.com slash JR McKee Co. Instagram.com slash JR McKee dot co. Um, follow me on those platforms. Um, if you're interested in working with me, 
I have a website, it's thestreamteam.club. And so this is where I work with all the people. I have a, a, a streaming course that teaches people, you know, the basics and the fundamentals of streaming. Um, I always tell people, it's like, you'll never make it in the NBA if you don't understand the fundamentals of basketball. It's just not gonna happen. And so it's like, why would you try to be an artist without understanding the fundamentals of streaming? And so I put together a course for that, um, as well as I put together a community called the Stream Team because everything is community now. And so if you want to join that community, you can speak with me every day. I have a great Discord group. I um, also have a mentorship program. But everything you want me, you can just go to the streamteam.club, and that's how you can get in touch with me. That's how you can join the community. And that's how we can get you started, you know, in the streaming business officially. So, yeah, so stream team, the streamteam.club, and then follow me at jrmckee.co. All right. That's the stream. We'll have all these links in the description section. Uh, but JR, man, it's been great. Yeah, no, this is fun, man. I appreciate it.